All right, buckle up, everyone, because today we're diving headfirst into the world of Porsche and a car that needs no introduction, the 911 Carrera RS 2.7. Yeah, we're not just talking specs here. We're going deep into the Porsche archives to uncover what makes this car more than just some of its parts. We're talking about a legend, a car that not only dominated on the track, but also rewrote the rules of automotive design. And we're going to break down exactly how it happened. So picture this. It's the early 1970s, and the world of motorsport is in a state of, well, upheaval, really. The racing scene, it was everything back then. Glory, innovation, pushing the limits. Right. But there was this new rule on the horizon, the three-liter displacement limit, and it really shook things up. Okay, so for anyone who isn't fluent in engine talk, yeah. what exactly did that mean? Basically, it put a cap on engine size. You could only go so big. And for a lot of manufacturers, that was a big deal. It was a challenge. They were used to squeezing power from massive engines. Yeah, some saw it as a roadblock, but not Porsche. No, they saw an opportunity. It's like they looked at this rule and thought, game on. Exactly. This was a chance to innovate, to prove that you could achieve incredible performance with a smaller, more efficient engine. And they already had the perfect platform in mind. The 911. Ah, the 911. Even back yeah. then, it was already becoming legendary, right? Absolutely. But this wasn't just about building a great car. Porsche had a bigger plan. They wanted to dominate motorsport, and they knew a winning car could be a marketing goldmine. Classic strategy. Win on Sunday, sell on Monday. But to do that, they needed something special. And that's where the RSR comes in. Now, this wasn't just a name they slapped on the back. Oh, no. This was a statement. RSR... Ren Sport Renin, German for racing, sport racing. This car, it had a purpose baked right into its DNA. I love that. And they weren't afraid to show it off. Picture this. 1972, the 1,000 kilometer race in Zeltweg. Porsche rolls up with this prototype. Wait, a prototype at a major race. They were that confident. Yeah, but there's a twist. The car is camouflaged. Camouflage, like they were hiding it in plain sight. Exactly. Motorsport, it's as much about outsmarting your rivals as it is about raw speed. Porsche, they were playing chess, not checkers. And that secret weapon of theirs, it absolutely blew the competition away. Talk about making a statement. Yeah, they knew they had something special. They were just giving the world a little taste of what was to come. A taste of a revolution. And by 1973, things were about to get serious. Porsche sets their sights on the world championship for makes. This is the big leagues. Absolutely. And who's behind the wheel? Legends. Herbert Muller, Gies van Lennep. These weren't just drivers. They were forces of nature. These guys were born to race. And they had the perfect machine to do it with. Daytona, Sebring, the Targa Florio. They were racking up victories left and right. They were unstoppable. And it wasn't just luck. The RSR, it proved that the 911, it wasn't just a sports car. It was a force to be reckoned with. Especially at the Target Florio. That race was a beast. Oh, absolutely brutal. Winding mountain roads, unpredictable conditions. Mm -hmm. It was a true test of man and machine. But the RSR, with those aerodynamic upgrades, that now iconic big rear wing. It conquered it. It proved it could handle anything you threw at it. It was more than just fast in a straight line. It could dance. It really makes you wonder, a car this dominant, born for the track, you'd think it'd be a garage queen, right? You'd think so, wouldn't you? Something you only take out on special occasions. But that's the beauty of the Carrera RS 2.7, isn't it? Absolutely. It was so much more. Porsche, they understood that passion doesn't stop at the finish line. They wanted to create a car that could set lap records on Sunday. And then tackle the Monday morning commute without breaking a sweat. And they actually pulled it off. They did. It's incredible when you think about it. They even had this one ad, I remember, it said, Tuesday to Geneva, back in the evening, Wednesday shopping, city, traffic jam. Like, yeah, no big deal, just another day in the life of an RS 2.7. Exactly. And that versatility, it all came down to the design. Lightweight, yet powerful. That 2.7 liter engine, six cylinders, pumping out 210 horsepower. They really pushed the boundaries of what a sports car could be. But hold on, because Porsche, they weren't done yet. They decided to take the 911 off-road. Oh, yeah. We're talking rallies now. And not just any rallies, the really tough ones. Right. The East African Safari, the 1000 Lakes Rally. Those are brutal. Brutal is an understatement. Yeah. Dust, mud, unpredictable terrain. These weren't races. They were wars of attrition. And they threw the 911 right into the thick of it. Two specially prepped RS cars, the 1974 East African Rally. Over 5,000 kilometers of some of the harshest terrain imaginable. They got second place, second, 
Just let that sink in for a moment. It's unbelievable. That rally, it shoot up cars and spit them out. Just finishing was an achievement. To come that close to winning? It solidified the 9-11's reputation. Not just for performance, but for its sheer toughness, its ability to take a beating and keep going. And you know, there's always been this what if about that race. Oh yeah, tell me more. One stage had to be canceled, terrible weather, and some people think, had that stage run, Porsche might have actually won the whole thing. Wow. The 9-11 conquering the East African safari. It would have been legendary, a true testament to the car's versatility. But even without that win, the RS 2.7, it had already secured its place in history. It's wild to think about. A car that could be tearing up a racetrack one minute, then tackling a rally stage the next, and still be comfortable enough for a daily drive. It's what made the RS 2.7 so special. That balance, that ability to do it all. And it wasn't just luck, they really thought about it. You know? Oh, absolutely. They didn't just slap on some license plates and call it a day. This was deliberate. Exactly. Take the lightweight design, for instance. Thinner steel for the body panels, fiberglass bumpers, Every ounce mattered. All about that power to weight ratio, right? Exactly. Makes it faster, more nimble, even better on fuel. But here's the thing. They didn't sacrifice comfort. Right. You still had those amazing supportive seats, a driver-focused dashboard. It was a race car you could live with. That's a big part of why people fell in love with it. It's incredible to think about the impact this one car had. Oh, it wasn't just about the car itself. It was about what it represented. The design, that ducktail spoiler, the bold colors. It was a statement. It definitely turned heads. Yeah. And it really cemented the 911 status, didn't it? Absolutely. It showed the world what a driver's car could be. And its influence, you can still see it today in every 911 on the road. Speaking of which, what do you think? How did the RS 2.7 shape the DNA of the Porsche 911 as we know it today? It set the standard, didn't it? It proved that a car could be both a performance machine and a refined companion. It could conquer any road, any condition, and it inspired generations of engineers and enthusiasts alike. Beautifully said. The Porsche 911 Carrera RS 2.7, a car that still ignites passions, a true icon of its time. And that wraps up our deep dive for today. If you want to explore more about this incredible car, and I know you do, head over to those Porsche archives we mentioned. There's a treasure trove of stories and images just waiting to be discovered. Until next time, keep the passion for driving alive, and we'll see you on the next deep dive.